Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video we're going to introduce the inner product. It's one of the reasons we're going to introduce the inner product is to help us with problems like this. In real life there often isn't a perfect solution to a problem, but instead we must try to find the best approximate solution or the closest solution to a problem. For example, I might be trying to find a line that passes through a set of points. Now I can think of all these points as the coordinates as shown here, and so I can think of them in terms of vectors and vector spaces, and I can think about the values for a and b of this line as another vector in some large vector space. But if I wanted to solve this system, it would be inconsistent. It wouldn't have a solution. But I know that there should be a line that maybe is the best line to pass through the set of points. So for instance, I would think that this line would be a better fit to this set of points than this line. But how can I be sure, and how can I choose the best one? Well, one way we could think about this is that if I look at the distance between these points to the line and I add up these distances, it would be smaller for this line than it would be for this line. But if I want to do all these calculations in terms of vectors, I'm going to need to introduce some new concepts. For instance, what does it mean to calculate a length for a vector? So I will need to talk about what length means. And then with length, I should be able to get the distance. We said the distance from these points to these lines. But is there a difference between I'm measuring this as a distance from a point to a line or this? Well, there certainly is. We would consider this the distance from that point to the line, partly because it's the perpendicular distance. It's the closest distance from the point to the line. So we also have to introduce the concept of perpendicularity or orthogonality um, in this vector land. So how do we do all this stuff? It turns out that we can talk about all these concepts, length, distance, and orthogonality, which is a fancy word for a perpendicularity, by using a term called the inner product, by using a new operation that we're going to define as the inner product. So what is the inner product? Well, it's an operation defined on a vector space. And it takes two vectors and it inputs, and it outputs a real number. Now, it's not just this operation that we define, but this operation also must satisfy certain properties. And we can define many different kinds of inner products as long as they satisfy these certain properties. That lets us define many different inner products on many different vector spaces. And so this allows us to talk about length, distance, and perpendicularity in abstract vector spaces. But for now, let's just look at a common inner product on a common space of Rn. So if we let u and v be two vectors in Rn for some value n, and we let c just be some scalar value, just some real number, then we can define an inner product of u and v to be this, u transpose times v. So this is one definition of an inner product, and this is kind of a special one. It's used very commonly, and so we will also have another name for this. We will call this the dot product, and we'll annotate it, or we'll use this notation for the dot product. We'll write the vector u dot the vector v. And so now how do we calculate this thing? Well, for example, if we let u equal the vector in R3, 3, 1, 2, and we let v equal the vector 1, 2, 0, then we can calculate the dot product like this, u transpose v, where if u is a 3 by 1 vector, then u transpose would be the 1 by 3 vector, 3, 1, 2. We would multiply that by 1, 2, 0. And if we do that multiplication, we would get 3 times 1, plus 1 times 2, plus 2 times 0. And we calculate that to be 5. And so that's the way we can kind of define it using matrix vector multiplication. However, we can also, once we look at what that definition actually gives us, think about u dot v just by grabbing the vectors like this. And we can see that when it's all written out in this form, this is really just the first component of u times the first component of v. And then we have the second component of u times the second component on v, so on and so forth. So we can really think about the dot product as taking this product, 3 times 1, plus this product, 1 times 2, plus this product, 2 times 0, of course, to get 5. So just two different ways to think about this dot product. In fact, thinking about it in the second way, we can actually rewrite this definition in a summation notation. So for instance, we could define this dot product to be the sum 
from i equals 1 to n of u sub i and v sub i, where those are the different components of our vectors. So this is the definition of the dot product. Now we talked about an inner product having to satisfy certain properties, and we'll formalize that idea later. But for now, we can show that the dot product, one example of an inner product, does satisfy these four big properties. So for instance, we have our definition of the dot product. And one of the properties that it satisfies is that it is commutative. So our first property says u dot v is v dot u. And the next one says that u plus v dotted with w is equal to u dot w plus v dot w. So this would be a distributive property. And then we have an associative property of scalar multiplication. And lastly, we have the property of positivity. This tells us that if I take u dot u, I take the dot product of a vector with itself, that that has to be greater than or equal to 0. And in fact, it's only equal to 0 if and only if that u vector is 0. So in other words, if I take any non-zero vector and I dot product with itself, that value would have to be greater than 0. Now, we're not going to go through a formal proof of all these properties, but I'm going to go through the formal proof for the first one so we can see how these properties are proven. So for instance, this first one says u dot v is equal to v dot u. Well, if I look at u dot v, I have the definition right here. So by the definition of the dot product, u dot v is equal to this. But in this form, I can see that u1 times v1, this is just the product of two real numbers. And I do have the commutative property of multiplication for real numbers, which says that that's the same thing as v1 times u1. And I could do that in each case because I have that property for real numbers. But this is just, by definition of dot product, the dot product of v dot u. So I've shown that u dot v is equal to v dot u. So these properties are really proven just that, that easily. We write out the definition of the dot product, and then we use the property of real numbers to show these properties hold. Now the last one might be a little trickier, but if we look at what u dot u would look like, it would look like u1 times u1 plus u2 times u2, so on and so forth, to un times un, which is really just u1 squared plus u2 squared, so on and so forth. And since I'm squaring these values, they would all have to be either positive or zero. And so this value would have to be greater than or equal to zero. That's why we can see that one makes sense. And in fact, that it would be equal to 0 only if all these components were exactly equal to 0. So we can see that that is also true. So in this video, we've gone through the definition of what the dot product is. And we've also shown some of its key properties. And that concludes this video. Thank you.